Hey, Metal Jesus here, and today I want to talk about some of my favorite racing games for the Dreamcast. Now, I don't own a fast car, so I have to live vicariously through video games, and racing are some of my favorites, and I'm just lucky that the Dreamcast happens to have a bunch of really great ones. Um, here they are. So first up is Revolt. This is a game that was released in 1999 by Acclaim. It included 28 remote controlled cars and 13 varied tracks, including a toy shop, a supermarket, a luxury liner, there's a museum, and more. Um, it included realistic remote controlled car physics and track surfaces. For instance, in this next video coming up, you're gonna see in the supermarket, uh, I'll go through a freezer and literally you slide around the corners until you hit the linoleum. This game uh, was similar to Mario Kart in that it had power-ups to attack fellow racers, including boost. You see there's, there's like this big metal ball that you can run into. You get uh, bottle rockets, things like that. A lot of people have criticized this game for being punishingly unforgiving, and uh, you know I tend to agree. I think it's a little bit harder than it needs to be, but it's, but part of that is also what makes it really cool. It feels like you're actually driving a little remote control car. So when I first got a Dreamcast and got this game, I thought this looks so familiar. Well, that's because it was called Speed Busters on the PC, but on the Dreamcast it's called Speed Devils. I don't know why, but it's, ex it's the exact same game. Um, it includes 12 pretty varied tracks, including this Hollywood track you're seeing here. Mexico, which you're going to see in a second. There's a snow-covered Alpine Mountains track. There's just a bunch of them uh, with UFOs and crazy things like that. You see a dinosaur right there. Um, lots of shortcuts, lots of things to, to see and do on the, on the side as you're racing along. This game's got a lot going on in between the races. You have your own garage and in there you collect some different cars. You, uh, you have rivalries with different drivers that you have to sort of deal with and, and you'll do duels and things like that. Plus the damage that you take during the tracks you actually have to spend money in between races to repair uh, and fix. Otherwise, you, you're at a serious disadvantage during the next race. There's also uh, upgrades for your car and things like that. Next up is the classic Crazy Taxi. This uh, is based on the arcade version, but it was released for the Dreamcast in 2000 by Sega. And I, I think this game really shows off the power of the Dreamcast. It just runs flawlessly. Um, a little pop in here and there, but I mean the frame rate is insane, and it really feels like you're playing the the arcade version. Um, speaking of which, this game contains the original levels uh, from the arcade, plus a brand new level specifically designed for the Dreamcast, which you see here. Uh, the goal of this game, and for those that don't know, uh, is to pick up passengers and deliver them as quickly as possible to their destination, earning as much money as you can in the process. Uh, it's balls to the wall, <laughs> go as fast as you can, smashing the stuff, and I kind of like that because the game is enjoyable simply because it's not too painfully difficult. Um, 
Like a lot of racing games, the trick to this is simply me memorizing where things are and how to get there quickly enough. But I love that big green arrow that just points the, the way towards where you need to go and you just haul ass getting there. It was pretty notable at the time because the soundtrack included uh, some great songs by Bad Religion and The Offspring. Another thing I really like about the Dreamcast version of this is that it allows you to change some of the rules of the game. For instance, you can tell it whether you want to play the arcade rules or you want to work for three, five, or even ten minutes. Um, it, it just really opens up the game and allows you to explore. Alright, well we take a little break here from the, the arcade racers to show you the F355 Challenge. This contains only one car, and that is the Ferrari F355 Challenge model, of which there was only 109 originally produced. Um, this game was originally released in arcades in 1999 by Sega, but then released for the Dreamcast in 2000, and later for the PlayStation 2 in 2002. Uh, this game includes the original six arcade tracks, plus five additional tracks that are unlocked through gameplay including the real-life Ferrari test track, Fiarno. <laughs> I don't think I pronounced that right. <laughs> but basically this game strives to be a very realistic driving simulator, uh, very similar to Forza or maybe Project Gotham, Gotham Racing. But it's unique in that it really laser focuses in on this particular Ferrari model. Um, and it's kind of an interesting Ferrari to sort of focus on. Uh, this is an, an eight-cylinder uh, Ferrari that was modified in this challenge model, um, which is super rare. I guess that even the, the guy who originally made this, the producer of this game, actually owned one and so was able to go out in real test tracks and make you know, absolutely sure that this game was a, an accurate representation of that car. And it feels like it. All right, and finally we have Star Wars Episode One Racer, based on the famous pod race in the Episode One Star Wars movie. Uh, this game is released in 2000 by LucasArts, and it's notable for the extreme sense of speed as these these pods just exceed, you know, sometimes 600 miles per hour. Now this game also came out on other formats, including the PC, uh, the Nintendo 64 is another version that I have, but the Dreamcast is the one I love the most. Uh, it just got the sense of speed right, the controls are spot on, it's really tight. Um, I just love it, it has all the cinematics in there, and it just has that great classic Star Wars soundtrack. Um, when I play this game, I just love it. And finally, one of the things I really appreciate this game is that it's not too overly difficult. It's one of the few racing games I've actually been able to play all the way through and beat. And, uh, you know, that's not always the case with some other racing games where they just get towards the end and just kick your butt. This game is perfectly balanced. It's a new lap record! All right, well, that was some of my favorite racing games for the Dreamcast. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear what yours are. Leave a comment. And thanks for watching.